here's an email I got from some guy, a customer, who bought a clutch kit off me for his stock, 850, whatever it is. And then he goes out west, but between him and Michigan and going out west, he puts somebody's, a well-known name, complete exhaust on, the white pipe, pipe, and really loud can. From new, I added your kit. Later in the season, I added so-and-so's pipe and went out west and it just ran like shit. Wouldn't pull RPM. Well, I wish uh, that guy would have contacted me because I would have told him, if you would have read your notes that I gave you in the second email when you bought the clutch kit, the paper on muffler, if you go buy this exhaust and put it on and go out west, make sure you take your stock muffler with you, either that, put on at home and then go out west, and you got the kit running good, it's your first time out west, you're at this elevation, you get the kit running good, or rather, you get the flyweight to make the correct RPMs for the elevation you're at, and then you're happy with that, okay, go change to your lighter muffler out there. Do it at the location, wherever you're riding, on the end of the first day. Because you always want to strike when the iron's hot, and the iron's the hottest at the end of the first day. You're getting back, and it was a great day, and everybody's high five, and you have a beer, and everybody's woohoo we're all having fun and that's when you still have the time to do it before you go do your social thing in the evening because tomorrow morning you will not do anything you're gonna get up late you'll be everybody's late to get in the shower and you'll be there's a line up at Denny's and then you're gonna go fuck it and you got the fuck it's and now you're not gonna change you're not gonna change anything so <laughs> And you could have done it when you had the right time, which is at the end of the first day. Okay, this guy here went out west, ran like shit, wouldn't pull RPM, etc., etc. 7,800, 7,700, click her up, pull a flyweight out, couldn't get it to respond. All you had to do is put the stock muffler back on, even though you got the aftermarket pipe and Y pipe, no problem, because the restriction is right here. When you have the right choke, that's this muffler, on this exhaust system, then you're going to have the best back pressure you can over top of some loud pipe that you could see through, see sunlight out the other side. And to top it off, my buddy sled with your kit and clicker three, 8,000 every time, and pulls like a freight train. What do I look for? Well, the one document in the second email about mufflers, put the stock muffler back on, that's what you should have done had the stock muffler on when you went out to Wyoming, 8,000 feet. And all the pissing and moaning and everything could have been avoided. Logic statement. If, then. If this, then that. If you're going out west and going to run an aftermarket muffler the first time, then, then, bring your stock muffler with you and the tools to change the muffler if needed. If you bring the muffler, can, whatever you want to call it, if it's a loud can, a race can, a straight pipe can, use carbon fiber can that has the baffles all chipped out of it, etc. If you see through the pipe of that can, then there's a possibility that can will cause the engine to lose power. The engine won't have the correct internal pipe pressure. If you change the clicker up and down and change the flyweight grams and the engine speed does not change, when you go full throttle, then your engine now wants to run at a lower power peak RPM. Get a factory muffler, put one back on, or an own one that works, HPS can say in my case, worked. At elevation, does not change the power peak RPM. And then what do you do? You go blame the clutching. No, the clutching didn't change. The power peak RPM did. You changed the muffler. That's not set up correctly, making the right back pressure for that elevation. Get near the end here now. Dynotech Jim's Gold, something he said to me. Those who buy non-stock mufflers to save weight should use their sled's digital tax to see if power is either maintained or lost. Your clutches can act like a mini dynamometer, right? Flyweight determines RPM. So the flyweight is a mirror of your engine torque. If you have a certain amount of engine torque, then your flyweight grams are gonna be a certain amount. If you lose engine torque, then your flyweight grams are gonna be less. Always baseline with the stock muffler in an area where you can run at max horsepower while observing RPM. Being sure you're at your horsepower peak RPM as indicated. Then switch mufflers. And if you maintain RPM, you're in good shape. But if you lose revs, you're likely losing horsepower. Five, six horsepower. Then switch mufflers and if you maintain RPM, you're in good shape. But if you lose revs, 
you are very likely losing horsepower. Then you must weigh the advantages of lighter weight versus lost horsepower. Here's my addition to it. Don't blame the clutch kit. It's whatever exhaust you put on that changed the power peak RPM and you lost engine torque and you change in fly weight, you're just trying to find where the engine power peak is now. You run at eight grand, normally, now it's at 7,800, 7,700, you keep pulling fly weight out and clickering up. You're not loading the engine enough, it's actually gonna become weaker because you can't put enough heat in the pipe for it to make RPM. So you're better off going the other way with the grams. In the end, you're better off to run with the stock muffler first. And then when you say, ah, this is the way it should be, Wah! then don't do anything. Just whoop, switch out mufflers and then go again. If your tax is the same RPM, not necessarily at low elevation, but at high elevation, once you get past like 4,000 feet, especially 9, 10,000 feet, if you don't lose engine speed, then you know that muffler is making the correct back pressure. This is it.